Well, Billy and Annalise, I've conducted weddings in many parts of the world, and I thought an American wedding would be very different from Africa and Australia and other places, but I'm glad there's a homily here, which allows me to speak to you both and to the congregation. And uh, there are many fine teachings in the Christian faith given in scripture as guidelines for life. And amongst the finest is the teaching regarding family and marriage. And from the scriptures we know that God created humankind to live in families. That is God's purpose for society. And families begin when a man and a woman pledge themselves to each other in the sight of God, pledging themselves to the highest ideals of selfless love. Today we have witnessed your making your vows. Now this was not a contract. It wasn't a case of you do this and I'll promise that. It is not a contract. It is a solemn vow before God, a covenant, a marriage bond. And it's about that marriage bond that I want to say a few things. First of all, I want to say that it's a sacred bond. Some people say marriage is just a legal bond, a statutory requirement, a piece of paper, a document, a license. But it's much, much more than that. In the Christian marriage, there are three partners. And the strength of the bond is that it's made before God and through God it's kept. You have both been no strangers to vows and covenants because when you were young people in childlike faith you promised to love and serve Jesus Christ as junior soldiers. Then at a somewhat maturer age you committed your lives to God and were sworn in as senior soldiers and only a few days ago you bound yourself to God in a solemn covenant and then were commissioned and ordained as Salvation Army officers. And here today is another vow. You are joined in a vow uniting you to God and to each other. And what God joins together is strong. It is a love that can withstand every onslaught. It can resist any force that might seek to break it. It transcends every fear and it surmounts every obstacle. It was the wise teacher of the book of Ecclesiastes who wrote these words, a threefold cord is not easily broken. And in that cord, braiding together are the lives of you two, Annalise and Billy, and God is intertwined with every promise in that cord. So the marriage bond is strengthened by God's involvement and will never be easily broken. What God joins is strong and sacred. And it's not only a sacred bond, but it's a permanent bond. You know, we live in times where promises are often broken with indifference and apathy both by people and nations. We seem to live in an age of impermanence. We sometimes call it the age of obsolescence. And we say things are not made to last. And people even cynically say that about marriage. On attitudes today, a careless attitude to promises pledges ignored and commitments broken. But your marriage bond is a permanent bond. Jesus said that. He was quoting from the creation story when he said these words. When a man leaves his mother and father and cleaves to his wife, it is for life. The two become one flesh. They are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined, let man not separate. And that's true. You two become one, one flesh. 
Billy united to Annalise, Annalise united to Billy, just as parts of the body are united together. And you should, Billy, no more think of separating yourself from Annalise than you would of tearing your own body apart, because it is a permanent relationship, faithful through every circumstance, sickness and health, for richer, for poorer, till death us do part. So remember, this bond can never be obsolete. What God has joined is permanent. And the Apostle Paul reminds us of that when he says that the whole of married life is lived, quote, in Christ, unquote. And that phrase surely means that the relationship that you have now is lived out in the presence of Jesus Christ. Your activities are governed by the Lord himself and all your decisions are made under his direction. This can never be more true than when you have both committed yourself to the call to ministry as Salvation Army officers. So it's a sacred bond and a permanent bond and also it's a bond of love and tenderness. I imagine everybody here has heard of the Taj Mahal, seen a picture of it. It's the most famous monument to love ever built. I've had the privilege of seeing it, and it is breathtaking in its beauty. And you know the amazing thing, it's made of the hardest stone, which is white marble. Now, it wasn't just the building itself, but when I went inside, there is the most amazing uh, carvings that are so delicate that it's almost like lace. And I remember standing there and thinking to myself, this is love, durable, hard, strong, like white marble, yet delicate, dainty, beautiful. I hope that your love will be like that, strong, durable, permanent, but tender with the beauty that comes from your love for each other. And that love was so beautifully described to us by the Apostle Paul in that passage you chose when he wrote to the Corinthians Christians that love does not bully or boss. Love is not jealous, doesn't make demands. Love is generous, always gives and serves. Love rejoices in the truth, cherishes and cares. That's a love modeled on the love of Jesus Christ for you, sacrificial love. So walk in love as Jesus has loved you. So with that, that love for God and that love that you have for each other, you walk into the future in ministry together and most surely God has promised to bless and use you together for his honor and glory. And in conclusion, I want to read to you both and to all the people listening a contemporary statement to complement the ancient words of the Bible. I don't know who wrote these words, but I think they will resonate in the minds and hearts of everyone here. It's called Building a Lasting Love. Start by giving, expecting nothing in return. Say easily both, I'm sorry, and you're forgiven. Give gifts frequently and when not expected. Compliment each other, especially in front of friends. Never bury anger or resentment. It'll only re produce bitterness of heart. Always listen to and respect each other's opinions, especially when they differ. Work equally at ha as hard on your relationships as you do on any other aspect of your service or your music or your outside interests. Never assume your loved one knows how you feel about them, for love unexpressed has no power at all, but love spoken and shared brings joy. Treasure peace between you more than being right or having the last word. Know that there is no greater reward than for loving 
than to grow up together, enjoying the life that you have created together. And finally, remember, as Billy's grandma read to us, God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. God bless you and be with you both.